at the face of societies, they look different. Of course, if you go in the street and look at the food and the, everything you can get, but that's what migrants have always done. They have also changed the way we look at ourselves and how we define our own societies. Although migrants change the face of societies, the idea they really change society in terms of its political and economic structure is much less likely. So migration is not that big of a game changer that many people envisage. One of the examples given by Alejandro Portes, who is a US sociologist, is yes, there is a much higher Latino presence in the United States. But have Latinos really changed the political structure of America? Have they really changed the economic structure of America? His answer is actually no. There's more and more Latinos running for office or even for presidency, but they still completely follow the rules of the American uh, political system. So at the face of societies, they look different. Of course, if you go in the street and look at the food and the, everything you can get, but that's what migrants have always done. They have also changed the way we look at ourselves and how we define our own societies. Migration only is a real game changer when the migrants who come in have much more power and resources than the natives. And that is, I think, the, tip, the, the best example is European colonialism. They came in very slow, slow numbers, but came with superior technology. And they overtook, literally, native populations. It's not about numbers, it's about power. So to imagine that poor labor migrants or refugees will constitute that changing power of European society is to totally overestimate not only the magnitude of that migration, but also the power those people would have. And I think it's sort of reversing uh, the orders of magnitude in terms of change potential. Most migrants have to fit in and try to fit into society. They change, of course, the way society looks, particularly at the shorter term with the first and second generation, having often very different habits and, and speaking different languages, coming with different religions. But over time, these are going to be seen as native features of native cultures but the idea that migrants really change society so deeply i think it is very tempting to say that but if you look at the longer term i think we have to be much care much more careful to draw such conclusions there is a lot of research showing that migrants themselves uh, change very rapidly in, in terms of their own so-called demographic behavior so migrants are known to adapt very ra rapidly to fertility norms in destination society which means that Already in the second generation, fertility levels are as high as amongst native populations. But we also forget that the world as a whole is gradually running out of children. That in a lot of origin countries of migrants, fertility levels are going down really rapidly. In a country like Morocco, fertility went down, so the average number of children per woman went down from above seven in the 1970s to actually just above two right now. The idea that sort of migrants can patch up, uh, can sort of uh, reverse the process of aging is overestimating the size of migration, but is also being based on a misconception about migrants having still lots of children. That is decreasingly the case. The idea that we're facing such high migration pressure that we threaten to be overrun by migrants. Again, there's no real evidence. If you look at real figures, migration has been changing over the world, like more people moving to Europe compared to 50 years ago. But the idea that this is of such a magnitude that Europe is currently being overrun is simply not based on, on any evidence. Mm -hmm.